dear uh, brothers and sisters, as you look at our lives, uh, many times we feel that if we are strong, then we'll be able to do things better. As a human being, we uh, think about being strong, strong in the body and strong in the mind. So when we think about strength, most of us think of strength as in a physical being. We look at wrestlers, we look at boxers, and we feel they're very, very strong. We look at those people who lift weights, we look at the big muscles and feel they are quite strong. Also, you see people who can lift heavy weights are considered strong. And in life, we find that those who have physical strength are able to do a bigger things than an average person can. The strength is associated uh, with athletes um, in whatever games they're playing. Uh, there was a time about 50 years ago when all games were uh, played with a lot of finesse. But today we find that in any game, whether it be cricket or uh, hockey or soccer or baseball or basketball, uh, football, you find that uh, all the players are trained to be very, very strong. And strength is needed for them to be able to perform at those high levels. We also uh, feel that those who are more brainy than us, those who maybe grasp things better, those who have more knowledge than us, those who are more efficient uh, in doing things, uh, we consider them to be strong. So they feel like uh, mental strength uh, is what makes them to be able to do things uh, properly. Also, many times in life, you know, we run into emotional problems. Uh, some people can deal with the emotional problem uh, much better than others. We see many people being very distraught when either something goes wrong in the business or uh, someone close to them uh, departs or uh, there's some other uh, emotional difficulty. Someone in the family has gotten sick. And we see many people like uh, break down under those circumstances and we feel that there are others who have the strength to pass through them. Let's say someone's going through a divorce. Uh, then not only the person going through a divorce, but the close family members all get very distraught. And then there are others, when a problem comes in, if there's a long sickness even, then they take things in stride and we can deal with it better. And so we feel that certain people are emotionally much more stronger than others. The key is, what kind of strength do we need to lead our life properly? As we start to understand about life itself, and as we start to understand uh, how we should be living, it becomes very clear that our life should be lived to make our soul, which is our real self, be nourished, be uplifted, and be in a state where it can be one with the Creator. And so we need spiritual strength. Strength of the body and strength of the mind and strength of the emotions is good. But beyond that, what is needed is strength of the spirit. So how do we make our soul strong? And what do we need to do so that with the strength in our soul, we are able to overcome all the obstacles which come in our way towards our goal of having a soul much in God. And how do we make our soul strong so that whatever difficulty might come in its way, it be able to handle it properly and not be distracted from its goal. Saints and mystics, when we look at their life, we find many saints come very frail bodies. 
many saints have come who might have not even been educated. But what was needed was not physical strength. What was needed was not intellectual strength. What was needed was not emotional strength. But they had the strength in their soul. They had spiritual strength. And that is what made them saints. And so that is the strength that we need for us to be able to fulfill the purpose of this very life. To be able to get to that state, all saints and mystics talk about finding our inner strength. We all have the strength within. Because we all have a part of God within ourselves. There is no one stronger than the Creator in all aspects of existence. And a part of the Creator is within ourselves and that's our real self and that's what we need to experience and connect with and know. And the key to be able to experience ourselves at the level of the soul comes in our life when we sit in silence, when we close our eyes, when we distract our attention from the world outside and go within ourselves. Because within ourselves is a powerhouse of spirituality. And as we connect with that divine power within ourselves, then we are uplifted uh, from the physical to the divine. And this is why so much emphasis is placed on the meditative practices. To experience the divine light of God, to be able to experience the celestial music within ourselves, to be able to be connected with the creative power which brought all creation into being. And as we connect with the divine power in ourselves, then layers and layers of mind, matter and illusion which are keeping us from truly recognizing who we are, get washed away. And as these layers are washed away, our soul comes in its pristine existence. In its existence where it's strong, in its existence where it's uh, beautiful, in its existence where it's pure. And it is then that we are able to experience the spiritual strength which we all have. Once we experience that strength, then we realize that no difficulty on the world outside can distract us. Because inside of us there is this great powerhouse of strength, of purity, of love, of peace, of joy. And so when we home into this divine ocean, we are fulfilled at all times in our life. And when we are fulfilled, then we don't need to do anything else. It's because we are unfulfilled, that is why we are running here to find some fulfillment running there, to find some fulfillment running there. But as a person, we all want to be, feel happy and joyous with whatever is happening in our lives. So we all want to be fulfilled so that our life can go properly. And so as we connect with the divine power then, we find that fulfillment because God the Creator who is within ourselves is, is stable, is the source of all truth, is the source of all peace, is the source of all joy. And so our being also, being a part of the Creator, start to experience those states more and more and more. And as we experience our spiritual strength more and more, we'll find that all other aspects of our life will fade away. You know, one of the things that we uh, experience in those who have found the spiritual sense is that they're able to deal with their anger much better. Generally, it's very easy to get angry. You know, whenever something happens contrary to what we believe or what we expect, we get angry. And so, anger not only hurts 
the one towards whom the anger is sent, but anger also hurts ourselves. And, and anger creates so much commotion and so much unstability that we are unable to be calm and be still. But as we experience the inner strength within, as we connect with the spiritual strength, then we get to a state where we realize that nothing on the world outside matters. And then a state of forgetting and forgiving sets in. If someone done something wrong to us, we forget about it. And since we have forgotten about it, it's not going to come to bother us. But if we remember it, then every time we remember it, there's more pain coming, more pain coming, more pain coming in our direction. So once we connect with our spiritual strength within, then we get to a state where we forget what someone has done to us that we think is wrong. And it's when we forget that we can forgive someone. If you don't forget, how can you forgive someone? You can't. So you have to forget the incidents, whatever are bringing you pain. And, and those incidents will only forget if you find something better. You know, whenever you find something better, then you let the other things go which are not as well. And so the key is to be able to home into the strength that we all have within ourselves. And as we connect with the spiritual strength within ourselves, we'll find that our anger is under control. For most people, the anger is not under control because it's our ego which is bringing the anger in our life. Our ego is telling us, we are the best, we know it all. And so when someone else says something who doesn't fit in their mold, we get angry at them. We say, how can they not, not understand something? Why are they having difficulties with a simple uh, situation? But as we find the spiritual sense within, we realize that each and every one of us has to go through karmas from the past. And because of those karmas, which they are not familiar with, and neither do we know what their karmas are, situations are bound to arise which are going to be contrary to what we expect. And then you take that in stride and say, that's a part of life. And you see, and you think to yourself, if someone has done something which is troubling me, maybe they're just burning their karma, let me just stay away from it. And you start to stay on your own path going back to God. So it's very important that we do find the spiritual strength. It's important that we be able to control the mind. If we live with the guidance of our soul, then our mind and the bodily actions that the mind creates will all be well. But if we live under the control of the mind, the mind is going to go amok. Sometimes they'll put us in this direction, sometimes that direction, sometimes that direction. So the mind only wants us to be engrossed in the world outside. The mind only wants us to be tied to this wheel of transmigration. It doesn't want this arena to be depopulated. And so it's our duty and our responsibility to not stay on that wheel. We can get off the wheel of transmigration by being one with God, but we need to experience the spiritual strength within, and then only are we going to be able to get to that state. And there's a very interesting example out of the life of Sankripal Singh Ji Maharaj, which shows what effect the spiritual strength have on the environment. So there was a time when he was posted um, in a, a military uh, arena. And uh, in that arena, you know, a lot of people were there and so they would eat uh, food in the mess uh, that they had. And many people were really afraid. They, were, they used to be like a thief and a murderer in that area, a daku, a dacoit. 
and everyone was really afraid of him. And he'd come in the mess and he would eat whatever he wants and people would be, uh, you know, shaking because he had murdered many, many people. Sant Kripal Singh Ji Maharaj started to notice that when he came back from work, his room was all cleaned up. Someone was cleaning the room without letting him know. And so one day he thought, let me go early and see who this person is. But no one would be there. So one day he came early from work and he saw this decoyed, who everyone was afraid of, cleaning his room. So he asked the decoyed, he said, why are you cleaning my room? And the decoyed said, you know, I've done over 300 murders in my life. And I've been looting people and I've been uh, living a life like that. But every time I see you, I shudder. It looks like there's some uh, difficulty in my soul or my spirit, but I can't stay still. So I'm trying to repay for all bad that I've done. And I feel that if I can do, be of some service to you, that maybe uh, I could be helped. And then he asked Sankripal Singh Ji Maharaj this question. He said, I have murdered so many people in my life. Can I be forgiven? And so Sankripal Singh Ji Maharaj said, the lines that Hazur Baba Savan Singh Ji Maharaj has given him. He said, repent and don't do any more. If you made a mistake in the past, it doesn't mean that we will not be able to reach our goals. But if we make a mistake, then we should learn from it, we should repent, we should know that we made a mistake. And we should not repeat it again. So that our life is lived in a clean manner and we're not bringing any difficulties into the life of others. And as we start to lead a life like that, then we'll find that there'll be happiness, there'll be joy, there'll be sweetness all around us. We all have this inner strength within ourselves. All we need to do is to connect with it. So we don't have to go to the gym and do all these exercises which we do for our muscles. That's not going to help our spirit. What will help our spirit is the connection with it, experiencing our the spirit, experiencing our soul. And that is what happens as we meditate. So let us meditate for a few minutes. Uh, please sit as comfortably as you can. Uh, close your eyes very gently, just like you close them when you go to sleep. The eyeballs should be focused eight or ten inches in front of you. And then as you close your eyes, those of you who have been initiated in the mysteries of the beyond, uh, please do a similar. And those of you who are new here, please repeat any name of God that you feel comfortable with. The repetition of God's name should be done mentally and not out loud. I pray to God Almighty and to the three great spiritual masters of the past century, Hazur Baba Savan Singh Ji Maharaj, Param Sankupal Singh Ji Maharaj, and Dhyal Prabhu Sandarshan Singh Ji Maharaj, to help each and every one of us here connect with this divine spiritual power within and to experience the divine light of God within ourselves. So we'll be sitting for a few minutes, I'll be getting you out of this meditative state. And my best wishes are with each and every one of you.
छोड़ दीजिए जी हाँ प्लीज़ लिव ऑफ